Ah, Cupid. With his tiny wings, mischievous poses, and angel-like appearance, it's easy to understand why he has stood the test of time. Today, I will be talking about the evolution of Cupid through the different periods of art. This will give you a comprehensive view on the periods in art and teach you the change in the appearance of Cupid over the centuries. So who is Cupid? In today's time, he is seen as an aesthetic, charming baby man wielding a heart-shaped arrow. This, however, wasn't always the case. Long before Romans adopted and renamed him, Cupid was the Greek god of love called Eros. In the poetry of the Archaic period, Eros was actually depicted as a handsome young man who was irresistible to men and gods alike. As time went on into the Hellenic period, he was portrayed as a playful child. It truly was the chubby, love-inducing baby man that captivated societies and became our Valentine's Day mascot. There is, of course, more to this story, namely the mythology of Cupid and Psyche, but we will explore the style and techniques of the artists in their time periods and how, they trans and how that transposed onto Cupid. We will go through Cupid's role in art history chronologically, beginning with his first appearance as Eros in the ancient Greek art from about 400, 450 BC. At this point, he was a slender young adult with large wings and a respectable pose. Aside from these familiar features, he does not resemble some of the attributes that we see today, including his signature bow and arrow. In the Hellenistic period, he grew slightly chubbier marked with youth. These versions strongly stood out with the style of the classical Greek art since the human form and expression seems to be the main focus. During this time, we begin to see his bow and arrow appear. In the medieval ages, Eros became known as Cupid, and to match the style, he was drawn as a winged child with adult-like proportions, which was a common practice when it came to depicting babies and children. Now, as we go into the Renaissance, we see that it was a time of renewed interest in the classical arts, humanism. This is where he became a realistic child. During the Italian Renaissance, we begin to see several Cupids appear in paintings. This example by Raphael in 1511 demonstrates the posture change as well. Cupid is more light and angelic with bright blonde hair and colorful wings to give him a more playful nature. The Italian Renaissance was marked by light, figure composition, and anatomy. Cupid elegantly captures these characteristics just in himself alone. Jumping into the Baroque period. Artists like Peter Paul Rubens made Cupids become increasingly playful and increase in number. In the Feast of Venus, they appear incredibly chubby, chubby and dainty, thus downplaying his godly role and power. Here we see a sense of movement and almost theatrical poses. These traits heavily affected and pushed Cupid to what he is today. Physically, the Cupids blur into one another, symbolizing Baroque's tendency to blur distinctions between various styles. Now, in the Rococo period, France became the centerfold and influenced the style greatly with its strive to entertain and impress guests. Inspired by ornate architecture, paintings became marked with light and heavenly alluring styles. Here we see Cupid become more dignified and natural. To match the, past the pastel aesthetic, Cupid had a more natural and baby physique and a rounder face. You see the same formula on women's bodies as well. Finally, we arrive at the Neoclassical period, where the French Royal Academy established a hierarchy of painting in 1669. This hierarchy was used to evaluate works submitted for the saloon prizes like the illustrious Prix de Rome and influenced the financial value of works for patrons and collectors. In this period, we just see raw talent. The best examples of Cupid come from the scene that has been painted for centuries, titled The Birth of Venus by William Adolphe Beregarhu. In 1879, the pastel colors remain from the Rococo period, but the balance and composition become more serpentine. The iconography saw a comeback because wings appear as well as the bow. Furthermore, in neoclassical sculpture, Cupid is actually depicted as his old self, as a young, strong man capable of heroism. In 1777, the work by Antonio Canova draws upon the mythological story of Cupid and Psyche, as told in The Golden Ass, a Latin novel. This sculpture depicts the moment when Cupid revives Psyche with a kiss. 
The flowing lines from Psyche's reclining form are echoed in the drapery that particularly covers her and Cupid's melted embrace. This conveys the neoclassical effect of living skin and softness. The flowing composition directly demonstrates the, neoclass the neoclassical accuracy of human form. The love shown here remains innocent, but also makes Cupid incredibly more respectable than his past forms. Overall, when we look at Eros or Cupid's evolution, we can see how directly each period affected him. When looking at Cupid individually, one can tell by the shape of his body, his pose, the lighting and facial fe features, just what period that work came from. Like all stories, his grew and changed and adapted to the culture's preferences around him. However, like most, his story came full circle and the original form is still portrayed today. Small chubby Cupid may have become our Valentine's Day mascot, but Eros is still known as a hero heroic mythical story. Thanks for watching. This project was done by Trinity Gomez for the Art 113F13493 class.